Hi guys, John the Inky Vapor here and today we're going to be talking about the Avocado by Geek Vape. Um, it's a top coiled um, bottom fed tank and it's kind of looks a bit like a Genesis but it certainly isn't. Um, very similar in design to something like the um, Hayes dripper tank that came out recently, uh, and I believe the GM. Those kind of those kind of style of tanks. It's cotton. Uses cotton. I have it mainly. I may it can be dual or single uh, coiled. Excuse me. I use it generally in in uh, single coil mode because I prefer the flavour and the single coil and the and the, and the vapour. Um, stainless steel, gold plated 510. We'll go through all this in the in the up and close. So um, I'm just going to put the vape on it. Flavour and. Uh, and the vapor out of this thing is absolutely spectacular. It's, it's one. Um, it's another. It's another really uh, great little um, rebuildable tank uh, from Geek Vape. There are some issues with it, but we'll go through those uh, a bit later. So what we'll do is we will go down, have a look. I'll show you the uh, the tank in all its pieces. We'll put it all together. I'll discuss the connections and various other bits and bobs. I'll bung a coil in it. I'll wick it. I'll fill it full of juice. And then we'll come back up and I'll talk about the pros and cons with you. So, see you in a bit. Okay, guys. Uh, let's have a it. This is the uh, box that the avocado comes in. As you know, I'm a bit shit at showing boxes because I don't like them, I think they're boring, but this one, uh, I'll show you the inside, you get a packet of spares, o-rings, screws, etc, and there's also a little allen key in there as well, you get a frosted spare glass, there's also, the, the tank would be sat in there, but I've got it in pieces at the moment, and um, spare drip tip, and a spare single, uh, single coil ceramic separator just there so put it back on the box it's nice packaging but like I said before boxes is boring alright so that's that out of the way okay so here we have the constituent parts as you can see quite a few parts to uh, the avocado here um, now it, the the there's been some talk about this tank, and I have to agree, um, it can have issues with um, the resistance, and uh, partly this is because I think it's because the length of this pin and the connection that it makes at the top. So what I'm going to do is this is the this is the build deck, okay, and you have a um, your positive. Uh, pin, sorry, your positive connection slots into the top of here like so, sitting on top of a peak insulator, uh, making it into a velocity style, and everybody loves these days, a velocity style deck like so. Now this is done by, um, well let's go through the parts first, so this is your base, which the uh, gold plated 510 pin goes through like so and that will then connect to this through here and come up through the top and that's then held in place with a little lock nut there okay um, let's see on the bottom you've got various little markings uh, it's even got a serial number who knows I mean the value of that is not great I don't think anyway um, what we have here Here's your top cap, and as you can see around the edges, you've got various uh, airflow 
controls. So you've got these two little holes. I use this to point at it. There's these two little holes here, two little circular holes. Um, and you can have those so that you've got a, a little hole on either side. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. And then you've got two hoop and great big slots as well. And then you can also have it just in in uh, in single co uh, single airflow, single hole mode as well. So that's the top cap. It then it in in there at the moment is the uh, is the uh, 510 drip tip adapter, which basically screws in. I'm just seeing if I can actually unscrew it with my finger because it's a, once it's in there, it's in there. I don't believe it wants to come out at the minute. Let's see if I can get it out with the drip with my drip tip that I've been using. There we go. Now I can't get the drip tip off. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So that's the that's the uh, five ten. I turn drip tip adapter which is threaded, I don't like the Delrin thread, and that just screws into the top of this. It's all very well made, very well machined, like like uh, the Griffin before it. Uh, these Geek Vape products do seem to be very well machined and very well put together. So you can then, if you want, if you don't want the 510, it comes with a 510 drip tip which I dislike. Um, that's just purely because I'm not a big fan of. Uh, metal drip tips. You can also have this uh, wider bore jobby which just screws in straight in Delrin wide bore drip tip. Uh, if you're going to be running it with the with the two air big slotted airflow holes like so, then you know you've got the option of having a nice wide bore drip tip. Or if you like me and you like running it in single coil mode. Um, with the airflow right the way tightened down, you can put the 510 drip tip adapter on, like so. And if you like me, pop your own little drip tip on there, and then you've got something that uh, actually resembles a half decent sort of uh, mouth to lung. So that's the top. Right, what we'll do is um, I'll put it all together for you. And uh, while we're doing that, we'll talk about the uh, the issues. So you've got your glass tank here. Pop that on top of there. Okay, and then we put the base on, and we just screw that into place, which holds the glass in place. Because uh, it's it's a should have discussed this really, I suppose. Doing this about our ask about face. If you see, if you look in the top there, you've got your wick holes, and the wick wicks. This is a a top coil tank, so your coils sit up here on the build deck, and the the, the way that I build it is I I, uh, I cut the wicks nice and long and run them down into the tank, and then uh, the juice flows up the wicks and goes to the coils, and uh, yeah, works very well. So what we'll do now is just pop this. Uh, positive back in there right now what we've got to do is get the 510 pin in there and got to hold the positive terminal in place while we just get that fed through so that we can it's a bit fiddly Trying to do this on camera is not the easiest, but hey, such is life. And we screw that in. Right, now my advice is not to screw this portion horrendously tight into there. Because that's now in place and that top plate is not going anywhere. It'll have a little bit of a wobble for the minute, but it's it's securely on there. It's not going to come out once you've got this lock nut in. Now this lock nut, 
you can see it's tiny it's got a little slot on the top there and we just pop that into the onto the uh, top of the uh, gold plated pin that's just about protruding out the top okay and we screw that in and we screw it in and we screw it in and we make sure to use a technical term you make sure that this is absolutely bastard tight on top of this tank really give it a good old crank down so that sorry about this I'm obscuring the view a bit but I'm really trying to get that in nice and tight there okay so that's that's now screwed in place as you can see if we can get a bit more uh, light on the map because it does seem a bit a little bit dark. So let's bring the brightness up a little. Yeah. There we go. And just make sure we're nicely focused as well. So yeah, that seems to be. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. So there we've got yeah. Allen key grub screws on the side, velocity style deck, uh, reasonably, you know, reasonable sort of uh, size build deck. Now this part here, if you see, this you use this in order, this is how I build it, I have it with just one uh, single coil, and that just pops in there, in two of the wick holes, just to shut them off, so you're not getting juice leaking out, and if you look on the back there, there's a little hole and that feeds through to this little hole here which then just blasts straight onto your coil uh, on the back of your coil so you've got airflow coming in this side and airflow coming in through through the through the little plug and straight onto the back of the coil which in my opinion really does give it some really good flavor in single coil mode um, you've got your your barrel your uh, bottom bottom section of the the barrel Let's get it right way up with the, the letters on so obviously you would line that up with your coil on there like so um, not even more like so so at the moment you can see right the way through there so you've got if you've got your if you've got your single coil in you've got a little airflow going through there big airflow going through there then with your top cap on you can do what I do which is I line up the little holes back and front try that again little holes back and front so I've got a little hole at the front here see that and a little hole at the back and that gives a really really intense like um, very tight draw airflow. You can kind of restricted lung hit it that way, but it is easy to do a very, a, a, you know, a, a very pleasant, quite um, loose uh, mouth to lung. It's not, not you know, not ridiculously tight, but you can still mouth to lung it, and I, I think you get really good flavour. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I have got a a little little twisted uh, three millimeter coil these uh, juice flow uh, these juice channels or juice holes wicking holes in the top here are about point uh, sorry not point anything they are about four millimeters in diameter I make a three mil uh, ID coil and pop that in and uh, wick it so the 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 cotton goes down in there once it's got the juice on it and everything it'll it'll expand slightly but it won't it won't expand that much that it completely and utterly restricts the um, the flow of the juice through through the tank so three millimeter in the diameter on the coil four millimeters on there once you've got the it all wicked up and all juiced up the it works out well and you don't get any leak in that way either so what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll pause I'll pause the video uh, while I just get this build put together and tidied up and everything. Once we've got it uh, got the actual coil in place, I'll actually uh, wick it for you and show you 
show you what I do with that um, because I think it's it's a, a valuable uh, to look at at the actual wicking of this thing. So I'll be back in just a second with the coil. Okay, so we're back and I've done my coil, as you can see. I'll just pop it there. Let's fire that. Flowing nice and even. Only got it running at a fairly low wattage at the moment. Now that's uh, twisted. Um, flat and round cantle, I believe. Uh, some pre-twisted wire that I bought from Crazy Wires. And that's coming out at 0 0.90 on the uh, ohm reader on the M class. So, you can see that. So if you can see the screen properly, that, that's uh, Pretty damn accurate. Um, no problems with the uh, with the ohms jumping about, and that's because I didn't screw that gold center pin all the way through. Um, I've tried explaining this to, to a few people, and they get a little bit confused because they don't think that this is going to sit down properly, but it does. Uh, every time I've done the done the bit where I just uh, screw the gold. In just about and leave and leave a well I'll, st I'll take it off here and just show you um, if I take it off here you can actually see how much is sticking out of the bottom so as you can see is it can you see that there's a fair amount of of the actual 510 pin sticking out of the bottom there. That's about a mil. Yeah, getting on for about a millimetre. And that seems to work really well. But again, you've got to make sure that, that little top nut that's in the middle there, if you can see it, that little top nut there needs to make you. Oh God, I've got some crap under my nail from coiling. Um, sorry about that. That little nut needs to really be on completely and utterly bastard tight, otherwise it's gonna, it's just gonna be an absolute twat and just uh, ruin your day. Um, and it will jump about. I've had it happen to me. Um, uh, it took me a while to work out exactly what I needed to do in order to get it to work. But ever since I've done that, it's worked every t uh, first time, every time. So right, what we'll do now? A little plug on there. That shows you, as you can see, that 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 little air hole just blasts straight into the middle of that coil now, at the back of it, which gives you just a really nice, I think, really nice airflow, and it and it attributes to a lot of flavour because with that plug in, and with the size of this little tiny this little tiny chamber here, as you can see, that sits on top of here. There's if you look at that in there. That's not a great deal of uh, of room, really. When you think that that's on, that's the deck. God, going off screen. That's the deck at that first lip, and then you've all you've just got that little tiny little domed chamber in there. Uh, it's just immense flavour, really, really good flavour. I just I can't I can't speak highly enough out the, about the flavour out of this thing, especially in uh, single coil mode. I did try it in double in in uh, dual coil. I found it a little bit of a pain in the ass and um, difficult, a little bit more difficult to fill because when you want to fill with this, literally all you do is take the top cap off, pull out your little bung, fill with juice, put the bung back in. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the wick. And we're going to put some wick in this bugger. Right, I just cut myself a strip of Muji about just over to the 3mm mark. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my... I'm going to take it off the table and put it on my trouser leg because it grips it a bit better. I'll just do the loose roll away from me. Bring it back towards me, loose roll back towards me. And I end up with a little sort of sausagey wick like that. Take the end, give it a twizzle, so it's nice and sharp. Pop 
pointy point. Pointy points are always the best kind of points. Poke it through there. Get on camera, John, you dozy bastard. Okay, now that is with if you if you just take take it like that and go oh that touches the bottom of the tank that's that's kind of that's too far because you've got to take into consideration you're not actually passing the wick around the outside of the tank you're putting it through the holes down the middle so what I do is I tend to just where have I put my scissors oh, here they are I tend to bring it down to the bottom of the tank here and then just cut sort of level with the O-rings with you know get my scissors level with the o-rings at the bottom there and then do the same on the other side so I've got a little bit shorter on the oh, I've got a little bit short one end I'll just pull it through slightly so it's easier so now we've got sort of I'll tip this so you can see so it kind of comes like that down not fully down the sides of the tank because what I'm now going to do get rid of these fluffy bits the fluffy bits. Right, I'm going to get the end of this and bring it up, up, up onto the up onto the tank itself. Just, this is the only fiddly ass bit about it, to be honest. And doing it whilst trying to keep it on camera is going to be a ball ache, I can tell. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to bring that up like so. Um, just a poke it, a poke it in the hole. Nothing better than poking it in the hole. The actress said to the bishop. Right, like so. I've got some needle, needle uh, tweezers here, and what I try and do is just get one of the prongs of the tweezers right inside and try and poke it further down inside so that it is nicely inside the hole it's not really touching the bottom of the tank but I generally if you see that but I generally find that once the once the juice gets in there it kind of drags the drags the coil further in anyway um, so it's not it's not really that that important and, and I tend to sort of tip it towards me as well which which kind of helps right try and do this one so you can see it as well bring that tip up to the top or at least try to oh god there we go and in you get your little bugger nothing worse than trying to put something soft in a hole all these double entendres about putting things in holes are just too good to resist, I'm afraid. I'm having a bit of a carry on moment. If you don't know what carry on movies are, you're either incredibly young or I'm incredibly old, so it's probably the latter. Right, now, there we are. As you can see, we've got the coils inside the tank, nice and fluffy fluffy at the top here and we're ready to juice now what i'm going to do is i'm going to use some yorkshire vapor a custard donut which is absolutely immense ah, righty right what i'm going to do take the little plug out take the top off the bottle and and get some juice on the tops of these coils. Now you don't need to do this bit because obviously it's going to feed. But I'm an impatient bastard, and I like to be able to vape it virtually straight away. So just get some juice on them coils, on them wicks. Give it a nice, good old soaking. This is a good thick 80/20 uh, uh, blend. Um, Yorkshire Vapors Custard Donut and it is absolutely fecking gorgeous and you just put your little nozzle inside the bottle inside the hole rather give it as good as squeeze 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 and you just 
splooge that juice into the tank. And it will, slowly but surely, get a fill of the bugger up. Now, I'm going to get this filled. I have to, I get a little bit wound up and a little bit sort of, eight, um, there we go. I like to make sure it's full as I can get it. Right, we've got a little bit of an air bubble there, but that'll do. Right, so now what we do is we'll pop our little plug back in, like so. Get our outer sleevey bit. That's a technical technical term, sleevey bit. And pop that bugger on now, making sure that the avocado is the right way up. So we've got that there, and I like to, as I said, I like to line up the two little air holes. So I've got a little air hole at the front there, as you can see, and a little air hole at the back. And there we go. One rather spiffy avocado tank filled with custard donut, and uh, we'll go up top and I'll go through all the pros and cons of this little bugger. See you in a minute. Welcome back up top. Um, so, the avocado. This custard donut by uh, Dale at the Yorkshire Vapour is absolutely amazing. Uh, eat it good if you get a chance to get some, do, because it's... Uh, it's very, 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 very good. I don't normally uh, vape custards, as any of you know me know. I'm uh, not a fan of custards at all, but I love this stuff. Um, this and Dibners are the only two custards that I've ever tried that um, I actually like. Um, while I was at the, uh, this is completely off track, but while I was at the uh, at the Yorkshire Vapors vape meet the other weekend. I tried some of his um, custard cream as well, and I actually quite like that as well. I'm not sh not sure whether I could vape that one all, all day, but it it's a very good it's a very good e liquid. Uh, anyway, the avocado. Before we get any more sidetracked, I really do quite like this tank. However, we're going to go through a few of the cons first of all. Con number one is it is it's prone to to getting a few little shorts and and uh, the ohm reading jumping up and down now I discussed the way to put it together in the close-up now I know lots of people have had issues with this and the uh, it is a fiddle it is a fiddle and until you get used to actually putting it together right you're going to have that issue and the other thing that annoys me about it is if you want to change your juice you've got to take the tank apart to get to the juice chamber and to clean it and everything, you know, you're gonna you're gonna want to clean your tank if you're changing your if you're changing your juice flavour. So you've then got to take the whole thing apart because you're taking the 510 pin out, the positive connection at the top uh, becomes loose. So your coil, you've got a chance of of uh, losing your build. So effectively, every time I've found the easiest every time I change flavour I'm ending up recoiling and and rebuilding the whole bloody thing. Now you could just take the coil out and then pop it back in again, which with on a velocity deck's not not too hard I guess. But uh, it's a faff. Um I've not right, so that they, those are the two main main quibbles I have with it. Positives. It's very well built. It's very well made. It looks really cool. I think. Um, 
for a, a little tank, a little sort of one of these little stubby tanks. It's a great little a little uh, atomizer that just looks nice. I've got my own drip tip on here because I don't like either the ones provided, but it comes with a 510 adapter, so that's another good positive on it. It does it does wick very well if you if you do if you follow the sort of uh, way that I've done it um, as I say I've not I've not had any leaking out of this thing I've not had any uh, any issues with that at all no no seepage this is not even a major amount of uh, condensation build up inside the inside the Airflow control ring or anything like that. It's all it's all been pretty pretty good and pretty uh, pretty trouble free really. Um, I want to love this tank. It's got a lot of really cool things about it. You can probably hear my cats just chewing through there on my food. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's got a lot of good things going for it. The flavour, the look, the, the the general build quality of it is very good, I think. But I, I find it very hard to recommend this tank to people unless you are willing to persevere and to really come to grips with that gold-plated 510 pin and, and the little top nut. Because the the uh, the whole kind of uh, aims jumping about and all, all the rest of it will um, invariably it will get on your tits after a while. Um, if you can't if you can't if you can't actually get it working right, it's not going to be usable because it will just keep saying check out miser check out miser. I wouldn't recommend that you use this on an unregulated device because unless you've got your build right, you, unless you've got it right sorted so that you know you're you're not going to have any kind of shorts or issues with that 510 pin and the connection at the top. Uh, it's 25-ish pounds. It's a great, it's another great value for money tank from Geek Vape. Very well made, very nice looking. It is a ball lake to use though. It is fiddly. Until until you've got that, until you've got that five pin sorted, it is a fiddly fucker. The fact that you've got to take it all, all completely all to, uh, to pieces, unscrewing all this bit and all these little nuts and you know it, it it's. It's not the most convenient tank to, to sort of clean out and put a new flavour in. If you're just gonna, if you're one of those sort of people that just vapes one flavour all the time, and I do know some people, my wife included, tends to just vape one one flavour all the time. It's not going to present you too many problems because all you're going to have to do is is um, every now and again dry boil, dry burn your coils, recoil it maybe occasionally, give it a, a clean every now and again but you're just going to be just topping up with juice and re-wicking it and that's that's going to be it but if you're somebody like me who likes to ch chop and change on your flavours a fair bit it can present the, the issues that I've already uh, stated overall I'm going to give it a tentative uh, thumbs up uh, just purely because I do really love the flavour from this thing. I think it's a, it's a great little flavour tank, um, and at the sort of build that I do on it, sort of the 0.9 with the single coil uh, running at 30 watts, it's it's just fucking lovely. It's really really nice. So, in conclusion, if you're willing to put up with the issues that I've already gone over and you're not bothered about 
any of the cons. It's, do these cons are all kind of some of them are kind of subjective. The the main niggle for me is definitely that is definitely the uh, the learning curve to get it put together properly. Never mind building on it. Actually, just getting the getting the tank put together properly so that you don't get that aim aim uh, the resistance issue. If you can if you can get past those things, it's a great little tank, and it's 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 worth the money if you're prepared to put the time and the effort in to, to get it working. There are other tanks of this similar of a similar kind of uh, design and build to this, and there are more and more coming out at this kind of price point. So it may be worth your while just to wait and see what else is on uh, out there, but. Um, this is this is a decent tank with some problems. That's the best I can say, really. I, however, do like it quite a bit. Right, so uh, we'll call it a day there before I carry on waffling. Um, if you like the video, please click like. If you want to see more from me, hopefully uh, you will. Click on the old subscribe button, and uh, if you you know if you want to share this video, please feel free to do so. And I'll see you on the next one. Hopefully, it will be the Doge V3 within the next few days or so. But anyway, take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye.